happy Thursday, guys. Uh, appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Uh, I know we're doing this uh, a day later than we typically do. It's been on Wednesdays typically, but I was out of the office yesterday, so we wanted to uh, kind of still do this because um, we had a lot of questions about this product uh, or this item that we're going to talk about today. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we still, uh, uh, you know, put this out there for, for everybody to um, catch up on kind of the wood versus steel product. And we're going to talk about a couple of other uh, building um, products out there that we have uh, used on some of our homes. Um, and it all boils down to weight, right? So um, the discussion today with uh, that Nikki's kind of set up for us is wood versus metal um, we've had a lot of questions about this uh, this is something that started uh, back when we started uh, movable roots we decided to go with uh, metal studs as our standard um, even though our background uh, in construction was really with wood uh, we were wood frame carpenters by trade trim carpenters um, very comfortable with working with wood um, so steel frames uh, were a little bit different than what we were used to working with, but our research kind of uh, gave us the um, information that we had that we felt like uh, steel was a, a better option with tiny homes. And when we're talking about steel, um, I want to be uh, clear about what we're talking about. So everybody knows uh, wood frame. Uh, this is basically a, uh, a one foot piece of two by four, inch and a half by three and a half, uh, picked up from uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, big box store. Uh, this is actually called spruce wood. This is a, a white wood. Um, this is what we would typically frame a wall with. Uh, there are some other options out there. There are some people that use a yellow pine or even I've seen some people try to use some PT wood and, and things like that. There's really no need to do that. It is much heavier uh, than what this spruce is. Uh, so it doesn't really make sense. This is what is used in residential bearing walls uh, all over the US. Um, there are some new products out um, uh, by LP and, and um, things like that, but we're just going to stick with kind of what uh, you can get at your big box store. So. When I talk about steel, I'm not talking about the residential kind of steel that you can get from uh, your big box store that some of you may uh, have inside your residential homes right now and what we were exposed to uh, in the framing world. There's a, a residential kind of grade steel. If you've ever walked through a home being built uh, or put your hands on some of that steel that's in the big box store, uh, you will realize that it's not the same as this. This is basically uh, this is a system that we use and it's called cold form steel. And basically this is a recycled product. It comes uh, to the manufacturer flat on a roll and they use this machine uh, to form it. And you can see here it's got uh, basically kind of uh, formed into a, a similar kind of setting as a 2x4 uh, but then it's kind of uh, finished off. Uh, with a little bit of an edge there. And that's what helps give it a lot of the strength as well. We particularly use a 20 gauge steel. Um, we don't use anything lighter or heavier. And the reason why we use 20 gauge, which is a little bit heavier than some other um, uh, cold form steel, kind of tiny home metal frame uh, builders are using. Some of them use a 22 gauge, which is a little bit lighter. The higher the number with gauge of steel, the lighter it is. So the lower the number, uh, the heavier it is. So 18 gauge would be heavier and stronger than 20 gauge. And 22 would be the opposite, lighter and, and a little bit uh, weaker, right? The reason why we use 20 gauge uh, is because the uh, pins and the fastening um, uh, tools that we purchased uh, work with 20 gauge. They do not work with the lighter gauges. They won't uh, fasten in the same way. So we'll talk a little bit about that uh, here shortly. I've wiped off uh, my um, uh, marker that had the weight on here, but fortunately I have it written down and we can kind of throw it back on the scale here as well. Um, but the, the biggest 
uh, pros and cons for steel studs and wood studs and let's kind of list those and go through those here real quick and and these are ones that you can find kind of uh, on the internet if you were to research it yourself but they're also ones that we feel are, are important to mention so um, steel stud one of the main pros in the tiny home space is that it's lighter now there's been so many questions of how much lighter is it and we're gonna dive into that uh, here shortly but uh, it is definitely lighter than wood uh, and, and especially lighter than uh, than this white spruce wood okay um, it, its quality is predictable meaning that this machine prints this out and it's going to be nice and straight which is something that we're always looking for uh, when building a home you want to make sure that your material is nice and straight your walls are straight uh, that way you can hang cabinetry and do all of the things that you want to do on the inside and not have uh, crazy bows and, and and different things in your walls right so those are two uh, major pros um, again it doesn't warp like wood and it doesn't bow like wood so that reverts back to that same kind of quality um, it's not gonna rot right so it's not gonna uh, absorb moisture um, it's bugs are not gonna eat it so termites big issue in Florida they're not going to attach themselves to this at all um, it's uh, impervious to fire right so this isn't going to catch on fire I'm not going to start a fire with this uh, or if there's a fire uh, inside the house uh, this isn't going to let the fire spread any farther uh, than what the fire started inside the house right and then it's not going to hold mold and, and mildew either right so it's not going to absorb that water and allow that mold and mildew to uh, kind of stay within that that product or that the, the uh, stud itself all right so let's talk about cons. Steel is about 30% more expensive than wood. So that, that's a pretty major con right off the bat, right? It is definitely more expensive. Uh, if you are kind of weighing the expense versus the weight, our feeling is, is that it's better to have the weight savings in the grand scheme of things uh, and spend a little bit more money on something that is uh, stronger and has all those other pros uh, but that's something that you guys uh, if you're doing a DIY build or working with another builder are gonna have to kind of uh, uh, think of yourself and of, of what uh, what's more important to you um, one of the major cons of steel is that you can't especially cold form steel again this is this is something that uh, is not in a big box store you're not gonna go to Home Depot and Lowe's and get this same style of uh, stud system that we use um, it's just not readily available in every place uh, around the US we're fortunate we have a local uh, uh, company that has the machine uh, and does all of the uh, uh, wood pan or um, steel panels for us right <clears throat> Another con is it's not easy to cut. You have to have specific tools to kind of work with this. Uh, fortunately, we've kind of set ourselves up and, and gone through that learning curve of, of how to get utilities through this when we need to. Uh, the other thing that the um, manufacturer does for us, he punches holes in it. The machine can punch holes wherever we want them uh, for utility kind of runs. Um, but it's just not as user friendly, right? Um, you have to have some special tools to work with this. Uh, we ended up uh, purchasing the, the nail gun. It's, it's, a, it's a specific type of nail gun that shoots a pin, a hardened pin into this. Um, but then you also have to use uh, like self-tapping screws uh, to, to work with this as well. So again, it's not something that uh, is as readily uh, used and, and familiar with from the carpentry kind of side of things. And frankly, it's not as easy to work with as wood. Um, many of you, uh, you know, you can you can uh, cut a couple of 45s and create a 90 with wood. This is just not as easy to work with in, in those manners. Um, you've got to use rivets or you've got to use screws um, and, and the cutting of it. It's just not not as easy. Um, you can easily cut yourself 
uh, after it's been cut or, or it's, it's around, so it's a little bit more dangerous uh, to work with than wood as well. You can get a splinter with wood, but this stuff can, can cut you open pretty good. So those are kind of the pros and cons of, of steel, uh, cold form steel frames. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about wood now. Um, one of the biggest pros for wood is that you can literally go get this at any box store. Um, Ace Hardware, Lowe's, Home Depot, they're all gonna have this product, hopefully. I know there's been a shortage uh, of this um, product uh, but and, and prices have skyrocketed, but uh, typically you can walk into that store and get it the same day for whatever project you're working on. It's less expensive than steel. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll dive into that in a minute with some of our kind of numbers on, on one of the houses that we've got built right now. Uh, but it is definitely less expensive uh, than the steel. It's easier to work with. Most of you have probably already uh, have the same tools that you need to work with this, a saw, a skill saw, or a chop saw. Um, you, can, you can manually hammer uh, nails into this. You don't have to have a, a pneumatic uh, nail gun. Um, you can use a screw gun to use wood screws and things like that. So the, the application and working with it is definitely a little bit easier. So one of the cons, uh, or, or a list of the cons for, for wood, is that it is heavier than steel. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So this piece of one foot in length, two by four, on our scale, our Harbor Freight uh, special scale here, uh, it weighed 1.02 pounds, or 16.2 ounces, right? And, and 16 ounces equals one pound. Uh, because the steel weighed uh, lighter than one pound, uh, it's a little bit easier to kind of use that math of 16.2 ounces. So uh, this steel piece, it weighed 14.2 ounces. Um, in the shortness of this, or in, in, the, in these two pieces, that means there's only roughly about two ounces of difference in the two here. So. Uh, in the one foot kind of uh, application, it doesn't seem like that big of a savings, right? But we're gonna get into in a minute what that would translate to uh, on one of our recent builds. So um, wood is heavier, it's a con, it's heavier than the steel product. The quality of wood is not as consistent. Um, you're gonna go to your box store, if you've never looked at uh, a two by four for uh, it's being straight or bowed or, or, or twisted. Uh, I highly encourage you next time you're in a, a, a Lowe's or Home Depot to eyeball a, a two by four stud and see how many you have to go through to get a straight uh, unit, right? So the consistency is different, which means also uh, when it comes to price that you're gonna have to buy more of these to really get the consistency of the steel, right? So it's again, something to kind of take into consideration. <clears throat> Florida based, we definitely have issues with termites in Florida. Uh, I know it's an issue around the, the US as well, uh, but these this bugs like this, right? This is a product that uh, uh, termites love to kind of burrow into and, and, um, and eat. You can do some things to prevent that. There's obviously some treatments you can use and, and some things you can do to prevent it, uh, but it, it is still possibly an issue, right? If it's exposed to water for a period of time, it will kind of suck up that moisture and it can rot, right? And it can also uh, hold that mold and mildew, which can be obviously a major issue in, in, uh, in a tiny home, right? So this, this product also, the weight of this product, this one uh, weighs you know 1.02 pounds or 16.2 ounces in this foot, but depending on the moisture of the wood, is also going to affect uh, that weight as well. So that's really the kind of list of pros and cons uh, to steel versus wood um, that you guys, when you're looking to build your tiny home, are gonna have to weigh yourself. Um, we obviously feel that uh, the pros for steel far outweigh the um, cons to steel, right? So 
Uh, one thing that I have on my list here, we talked a little bit about weight. Um, let's talk about costs, right? So right now with uh, wood prices pretty much skyrocketing all over the US, uh, in our area, this is running about, for easy numbers, this is running about a dollar a foot. So this piece of wood costs one dollar, right? Steel is running about a dollar twenty to a dollar twenty-five, depending on where you're going to get it from. So there is a pretty significant cost difference in the two. Uh, so it's lighter by about thirty percent uh, if you do that math, uh, but it also costs almost twenty to twenty-five percent more. Right. So again, something that you're going to have to weigh, uh, you know, with building either your DIY or uh, with your builder uh, when you're talking about uh, um, building your tiny home. Not all builders will work with steel, uh, and part of that is it's not as readily available to them. Uh, you can. There are some steel manufacturers out there that will ship this product to you. Um, you can get it delivered to the builder. And they can assemble it on site, um, but that's also an additional cost. It's got to, you know, be shipped to you. So, not all builders are willing to work with it. And it, and again, it goes back to it's not the easiest to work with, and there's a pretty crazy learning curve initially in working with it. So, um, just some kind of fun numbers uh, for one of the builds that we have out here right now. Um, so we talked about it being basically two ounces uh, in a foot kind of setting uh, lighter when I'm referring to steel. The house that we have out here right now, uh, it's um, a 28 foot uh, custom build. Uh, it's called the cabin for the customer. Um, it has about 1900 linear feet of steel in the entire frame system. And if you've seen on our Facebook, uh, or our Instagram pages, uh, you'll see kind of pictures of what the wall frames look like. Uh, they're basically just like a two by four style wall. Uh, they've got a bottom plate and a top plate, vertical studs, uh, wood headers and sills. So it's, it's, it's the same kind of system as old school kind of wood framing. But it takes a little bit less steel uh, than it does wood in a uh, frame system, right? Most structural frames with wood have a double top plate uh, where steel only has a single top plate because it goes back to its being stronger. So there's about 1900 linear feet uh, of metal uh, in the cabin build, which equates to about 1700 pounds of steel, okay? So if we were gonna duplicate that in wood, uh, in, in this spruce um, uh, product at the 1.2 uh, average, it would take about 2,200 linear feet to duplicate that same frame system, and which equates at this weight to about 2,200 pounds, right? So on that build, we saved, going with steel, we saved about 500 pounds overall. So. 500 pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start factoring in all the other things that still have to be added into the house, uh, 500 pounds can really add on uh, to that overall number at the end, right? The other thing to think about and, and, and how we look at it as well is that 500 pounds allows us to do a few different things. It allows us to do some things like using uh, quartz countertops, right? Quartz is obviously heavier. It's something that you don't normally uh, think about putting into a tiny house, but because we're saving weight, we have that ability to uh, put that in as a uh, product uh, of use in our homes. Um, the other thing that we uh, typically do, all of our cabinetry is all custom built. Uh, building custom cabinetries takes a lot of wood. Uh, unfortunately, which obviously we know is heavier. Uh, so building those cabinet boxes and, and, and custom making them, uh, we get that little bit of savings, that 500 pound savings uh, with the steel uh, to kind of play with and, and, and add in some additional cabinetry that maybe we wouldn't have the ability to add in uh, if we had gone with a wood frame. 
So it's definitely something to think about uh, in your overall kind of uh, build ideas. Uh, we've got a couple of other products up here that we work with and, and we thought it would be interesting to kind of add those to the talk today about kind of that weight savings. So we've got this LP um, siding. There's a lot of people out there using this right now. Uh, it is a very similar kind of cedar look uh, siding. Um, and it's basically a man-made kind of product. It comes with a 30 year uh, primer uh, already attached uh, and, and from the factory on the top. Uh, and it's basically a, um, a glued um, OSB product uh, that's made to look like cedar, right? So it doesn't have the uh, same kind of um, issues with um, exposure and uh, expansion as cedar as a, as a natural wood does, uh, but it gets you that same kind of look that you can paint and, and things like that. So uh, this weighed 14.2 ounces uh, for a, a one foot piece of it. The same kind of look out of a um, cellulose PVC product that we've used on some of our latest builds. This is a uh, product from Royal uh, Building Products. This weighed 11.4 ounces. So again, only a two ounce difference, uh, but when it's all said and done, um, the cellulose product is gonna weigh a few hundred pounds lighter when it's all applied to the building. One thing that TJ and I were talking about was something to take into consideration on this, just like we did on the wood, is price. This is definitely cheaper uh, than this finished product. This is a uh, product that comes completely finished, uh, so you don't have to paint the outside of this. Um, so as material cost, this is definitely cheaper. Labor cost, this actually costs more in labor just in the uh, application of this product. So uh, the, the way that this product is applied to the house uh, is something that has to be kind of thought of in the big picture. Uh, it might make sense to buy it because it's lighter and it's already finished, but it might cost you uh, more in the long run uh, because the labor was more expensive to, to put it all up, right? So something to think about with all of these items. Um, another product that we just kind of uh, were exposed to uh, is uh, we've been using Zip or LP has a, um, a product called uh, Weather Logic. It's basically uh, uh, new and, and upcoming OSB. I don't like to use the word OSB because uh, OSB is not very uh, popular in the construction world. I know I wasn't a fan of it when I was framing, uh, but this stuff has come a long way. Uh, you can leave this thing outside and it's not going to swell. Uh, you can leave it in the elements and water and it's not going to swell as like the old OSB used to. It's got a coating on the outside of it uh, where you don't need a barrier, a, um, like a Tyvek uh, system on the outside. You just have to tape your seams, right? So you don't have that labor of uh, going around with the Tyvek and, and putting the weather barrier, the water barrier on it. Uh, you just have a, a tape system that goes on top. So labor-wise, it's a little bit uh, easier than the old style stuff, but uh, you know, a great product. It, it does have some weight to it though. A full sheet of this weighs about 50 pounds. And so you start to think about how many sheets you need to cover your entire build, and that starts to add up, right? We were just recently uh, exposed to this product. It's basically a uh, structural insulation uh, sheeting. Uh, it is by uh, Ox uh, Sheeting. Ox IS is the name of this. It has an R factor as well, so it also adds to the um, your overall insulation value in your house. Uh, but this only weighs 16 pounds a sheet, so a significant difference in uh, um, overall weight per sheet. Uh, that can definitely help. One of the cons to this uh, new product is that it does need to be uh, screwed off uh, and attached to the studs, uh, nailed or screwed, uh, about every three inches. So it's definitely a lot more uh, labor in that aspect. 
uh, less labor and, and, and tiresome to move it because it's much lighter than, than carrying sheets of, of half inch um, uh, weather logic plywood. Uh, but you still have to spend a lot of time, uh, especially on the steel screwing this off. Now, the other con to this is in between studs, this does not have the same uh, rigidity to it. It does have like a, a, a hard rear kind of um, uh, base that the insulation is attached to, but it's not recommended to attach anything through this to just the uh, space between the studs where you could screw a piece of this siding if you're in between the studs you could screw a piece of this siding uh, if it wasn't necessarily uh, on um, your 16 inch centers you could screw it through this wood and and that screw will hold very strongly right uh, where with this product if you were to do that that screw if it's not into a stud uh, it is not going to fasten as, as, as well as it will into this. So your application of exterior products really needs to be a uh, perpendicular to the uh, stud pattern, right? So like changing this to a, uh, a board on batten look that is attached with wouldn't necessarily work as well with this product because you wouldn't have the strength uh, that you need for fastening those boards. So something, again, you have to think about in the big picture of this is gonna save us a lot of weight. However, it might uh, not be able to, uh, we might not be able to use the exterior product uh, in the fashion that we wanted to, right? Um, TJ, was there a question? Uh, what's OSB stand for? Oriented strand board. So you almost got me on that one. <laughs> so, Oriented strand board. So basically, it's a bunch of pieces of wood glued together, right, to make this and compressed. Uh, so the benefit of this is it's got, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's taking chunks of wood uh, and, and, and creating basically a man-made product out of it. It's got glue and, and all kinds of stuff in it to basically kind of compress and keep it as a, um, uh, a finished product, right? So that's what OSB stands for. What's the nominal size of a sheet? So when we refer to a sheet of plywood, it's uh, 48 inches uh, by 96 inches. So four foot by eight foot, and that's roughly about 32 square feet, right? So um, again, that's gonna, your average tiny house, the, the house that's out there, uh, the cabin build, that's gonna take about 40 sheets roughly off the top of my head to finish that entire house, right? So if I do the quick math, let me grab something here. Sorry about that. But if I were to do that at 40 sheets, so let's take 50 pounds minus 16 pounds. So that's 34 pound savings times 40. So we're gonna save a pretty significant amount. That's about 1,300 pounds uh, in overall weight between these two products. Plus we're gonna get an additional insulation value of an R3 uh, with just this product alone. So um, cost on these two, again, the product that is lighter and uh, has a, 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 a larger R factor is more expensive, unfortunately. So uh, compared to the two, this is about twice as expensive as the uh, standard um, zip or weather logic board. So, um, you know, again, it's got to be, you're going to have to weigh uh, the, the two out when you're looking to build your house or working with your builder on, you know, what overall uh, is best for your budget. So I think we've kind of discussed really the pros and cons to some of these products. Uh, we hope that this video has helped. We've always been asked, you know, what's the actual savings? So again, about 20% uh, weight savings from an actual steel stud to a wood stud. And that's factoring in that, you know, you're gonna need more wood to typically uh, do the same thing that these steel studs can do. And also, this is comparing to 20 gauge steel, uh, which is uh, definitely a, a much stronger 
uh, steel than what some have been referenced on you know, your normal interior uh, walls, steel walls um, in, a, in a residential build that aren't bearing, um, you know, very flimsy if you're familiar with them at all. So again, this is cold form steel compared to uh, spruce wood. So I think that does right at that 30 minutes. Uh, we hope to see you guys next week. We hope you enjoyed this information on some different products and, and some pros and cons. And we look forward to uh, chatting again next week. Have a good weekend.